James Warren, Empire of Monsters, the man behind Creepy, Vampirella, and Famous Monsters, published in paperback form by Fantagraphics Press 2023. Greetings, friends. Today we are looking at James Warren, Empire of Monsters, the man behind Creepy, Vampirella, and Famous Monsters, a biography by Bill Shelley, and this was published in paperback form by Fantagraphics Press in 2023, so it's pretty new. The book is about 351 pages, and it takes a deep dive into the history and world of James Warren and his publishing empire. And there are a few shocking revelations that I found in this particular book that I did not know about James Warren. But first, let's take a look inside. Bill Shelley, you may recognize the name. You probably have a few books by Shelley. He is well known for doing books about comics, publishers, artists, a lot to do with the genres of horror, science fiction, and fantasy. Contents page. Author's preface uh, goes all the way down. Starts with The Boy Who Would Fly, of course, Warren as a kid, then going into college and getting into publishing, expanding 1960s, ups and downs, creepy beginnings, of course, mid-60s with Creepy Magazine. A few other chapters of interest, Will Eisner in the Spirit Magazine. Louise Jones enters as editor after Bill Dubay exits. We'll get to that. Warren Silver Age, the end in slow motion. And, of course, the incredible auction that took place under the bankruptcy of the Warren Empire. There's a really great shot of Bill Warren, of course, with the Cousin Eerie mask. Love that. It's very well done. Here we have some, and here we have various Warren publications, of course, Help, Creepy. Vampirella, Monster World. And of course, many may recognize Barbara Lay on the cover of Vampirella and the Frazetta cover of Creepy Number 5, as well as Tor Johnson's cover on Monster World by Gray Morrow. An issue of Spirit Magazine Number 2, of course, covered by Will Eisner. Further into the magazine, here is one interesting thing that I, I never read this story. Uh, but it's, uh, it's kind of like that classic tale of never meet your heroes. Warren's quest for photographs led to an incident that Harvey Kurtzman found unsettling. He later told the story to Fantagraphics publisher Gary Groth. This is the story as related to me, Groth recalled. One day, Kurtzman accompanied Warren to a place in New York where Warren got stills for his magazines, the corporate headquarters of a film studio in New York. And I guess they kept their photographic archives there. There was an old guy who worked there. Warren greeted the guy, kind of a bent old guy who presumably had been the archivist, there forever and gave him some toys for his kids or grandkids. He hugged him and asked, how are you? Like they were old friends. Then this guy said, excuse me, I'll be back in a few minutes. I've got to go down the hall. And as Harvey told it, the minute this guy walked out the door, Warren leapt over the counter and started pulling photos out of drawers and files and stuffing them into his briefcase. Then he leapt back over the counter, straightened up, and acted like nothing had happened. Harvey was horrified. The guy came back, and Warren continued his friendly conversation with the guy. It was great seeing you, blah, blah, blah. He walked out, and Harvey told me in all seriousness when they got to the street, 
he turned to Warren and said, deadly serious, never do that again. He was quite shaken by what he'd witnessed. James Warren in the background there with the cash register. Kurtzman with the telephoto lens. Steinem here with a life preserver for general assistance. And Chester, a drawing board for doing the production work. Many may recall, and some probably still have this great paperback issue, the best from Famous Monsters of Filmland, published by Paperback Library in June of 1964, and as it says here, by then, the monster craze was in full swing. Check these out, folks. We've got favorite westerns of Filmland, with cover art by Jack Davis depicting John Wayne, duking it out, pun intended. Uh, issue of Help Magazine, of course, with Sid Caesar on the cover. Monster World number one. There it is, the collector's edition. And, of course, Screen Thrills Illustrated number eight. And on the opposite page, we have a really cool and unusual-looking Wally Wood cover for the Spaceman 1965 yearbook. So this is issue number two. Issue number one was the very rare Ashcan black and white. Some of the first creepy covers here. This fantastic eerie cover. Always loved that. That one by Frazetta. Just incredible. And Frazetta's portrait of Uncle Creepy. Also, too, I've seen a early Dave Stevens. I think he was a teenager. He may have been like 18 or so, and he did an homage to this Frazetta cover of Uncle Creepy. Blazing Combat, of course, 1984. I had a few issues of that back in the day. The Spirit, of course, Will Eisner's Triumph. The official World's Fair comic souvenir, Hanna-Barbera, The Flintstones at the New York World's Fair, 1964. There are also some really nice one-pagers from various stories taken out of Creepy and Eerie. And this one is just gorgeous, and I completely agree with, the, with Bill Shelley. I'm glad he included this in the book. But as it says here, an outstanding page of art by Reed Crandall from Archie Goodwin's adaptation of The Telltale Heart, of course, written by Edgar Allan Poe, in Creepy Number 3. This is another point of interest for me, since I never read much about the Warren bankruptcy. Here is the 1983 auction notice from the GEM Auction Corporation. August 30th, 1983, at 11 a.m., New York City. Comic book art and magazines. Original art by Enric Gogos San Julian, Todd Baudet, Peterson Wrightson, Penelva, and many more. Approximately one million comic book magazines. Comics International, Moonraker, Creepy, Eerie, Mole People, Blazing Combat, Famous Films, Superheroes, Alien Illustrated, Alien Invasion, Goblin, Screen Thrills, Galactic Comics, Rook, Rex Havoc, Future World, Lord of the Rings, etc. Also, the reprint and publishing rights, copyrights, registered trademark to the above properties, and some equipment, duostat camera, shelving, blueprints, cabinets and chairs. Of course, you have an early inspection here, as they say, on August 29th. Underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. One thing that's interesting to note, of course, it says the reprint and publishing rights. Who got those reprint and publishing rights? But Stanley Harris, as it says here, magazine publisher Stanley Harris had been there at some point and was in the offices for the auction the following day. He was persuaded to attend by original art dealer Tony Despoto, who was interested in the art that remained by the classic Warren comic artist. Harris obtained the entirety of the artwork with a bid of $27,250. 
He won the entire backlog of the Warren magazines for $67,000, approximately 15 cents each. That's it, folks. And, of course, Harris Publication picks up the rights for the Warren comics, which is why you see Harris reprinting a lot of the original Warren art. Here is the back cover. Great shot, of course, the classic Vampirella. So that's just a brief look at James Warren, Empire of Monsters. As I said before, it's a great read. If you want to know about the history of Warren publishing, the comics Creepy, Eerie, Vampirella, Famous Monsters, and so forth, this is an indispensable book. Just amazing anecdotes, information, background history, all the way through. And I think Bill Shelley does a great job. Highly recommended. The link is in the description, so if you're interested, check it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you soon.